greetings and welcome once again to the Gaming Codex, a show where I try to explain to you all the many and endless terms used to describe video games, the video games industries and stuff associated with video games, and today's term is that of Adaptive Sync, which you may better know as G-Sync or FreeSync. According to the general definition, Adaptive Sync would be the dynamic adjustment of a monitor's vertical refresh rate to the frame rate of the graphics card. Adaptive Sync eliminates staring, stutter and judder and was developed for the video games industry. You know, mostly because uh, other types of media displayed on the screen tend to not really have a high enough frame rate to actually not be able to sync up with the monitor or with the television. In essence, you can think of it as reverse V-Sync, where in the case of V-Sync, the GPU was limited to what the monitor could do. Here, the monitor is limited to what the GPU can do, though of course, in the limits of what the monitor can also do. Adaptive Sync works by modifying the refresh rate of the monitor on the fly to coincide with the frame rate of the graphics card, but it will never go beyond what the monitor can do. For example, if your monitor has a maximum output refresh rate of 60 Hz, it cannot display more than that, which is why Adaptive Sync over the maximum threshold of the monitor will just not work, depending on what type of Adaptive Sync you use and what options you enabled, when it hits that limit, it will either enable V-Sync or just leave the frame rate uncapped and then tearing will appear. The same goes if it goes below the minimum possible refresh rate of a monitor, because a monitor can only display a set number of frames before it uh, sort of doesn't work anymore. Some of them can display around 40, others can go as low as 30. Below that, they're not capable of sustaining an image. They will just turn black. And yet, the current versions of Adaptive Sync that we do have, the more fancy ones I mean, are capable of compensating for that by basically inputting multiples of the same frame, usually a duplicate, to still keep the monitor going above its minimum refresh rate while basically displaying less frames, less unique frames, original frames, than the actual refresh rate you're seeing on a monitor. Adaptive Sync is part of the specifications of display adapters like HDMI and DisplayPort. It can be implemented by anybody that wants to, but it's not yet something that everybody is obligated to implement. Which leads us to the popular definition, and that is the thing that makes my monitor cost as much as my kidneys. The adaptive thing that we know, and we use, some of us at least, on a day-to-day -day basis comes in the form of G-Sync and FreeSync. These are proprietary, well, not entirely proprietary. FreeSync isn't. FreeSync is just adaptive sync, but that's what AMD calls it and they do some bit of gizmos there to enable certain things. But G-Sync is. G-Sync and FreeSync both do the same thing. They remove tearing by limiting the refresh rate of the monitor to exactly what the GPU can output. But they do it in very very different ways. Whereas FreeSync does it through the HDMI and DisplayPort standards, it just does it through the cable, through the circuitry that already exists in the monitor without adding anything to it, NVIDIA's implementation of G-Sync actually adds an extra component in the monitor. And that absolutely does increase the price by about $100, meaning that G-Sync monitors tend to be a lot more expensive and not as common. But is the implementation better because of the extra circuitry? Well, in some ways it is. G-Sync may have a bit of a lower latency, though it depends on a number of factors which are aren't by no means scalable from one system to another from one instance to another they they can sort of go back and forth but g-sync is a bit more stable because it's done in its own separate hardware thing whereas FreeSync at times can cause some issues if amd does not provide proper support not that g-sync is perfect but you get the idea also there's the issue that g-sync does support by default the option to generate duplicate frames so that the monitor can still display within the uh, the g-sync range a game that is running at below uh, the 
frame rate that the monitor can actually function at. FreeSync monitors do not all support this. They need a low frame rate compensation built in. Some of the older models not have that, mine does not. So I'm limited to a minimum frame rate of 40 frames a second. Below that, there is no FreeSync. With G-Sync, regardless of what monitor you use, there is no problem. But again, it does cost quite a lot and it hasn't really propagated properly through the market. It's just not something that's going to catch on in a big way because it will only work on NVIDIA graphics cards. Whereas FreeSync, even though it's an AMD thing, is basically just adaptive sync, which can technically work on Intel stuff too. Though now that I think of it, since we will have AMD GPUs with Intel CPUs bundled together in laptops, that's not even an issue anymore. They're gonna support FreeSync by default. And the FreeSync, G-Sync as well actually, do also provide benefits to laptops in terms of power usage because by default a screen will refresh at its maximum refresh rate 60 hertz most of the time that uses power but with an adaptive sync implementation it'll keep it at the minimum possible as long as it doesn't need to actually output more frames than the refresh rate so that will lead to some power savings right there and the upside is that not all of the uh, g-sync compatible laptops actually use technically g-sync because there's no module involved, they just use adaptive sync and people have hacked such laptops to use FreeSync. And that leads us to the marketing definition, which would be, we could all use the adaptive sync that's in the default HDMI and display port specifications, but we won't. There's a bit of an issue with companies in the sector where they do not really want to use stuff that's not theirs especially Nvidia. AMD has its issues, but they're really big nowadays into the whole open source thing, the whole let's everybody share some technology and everybody use it freely, partly because their development budget for software is non-existent, but that also means that they will allow anybody to use FreeSync, because at its basis it's adaptive sync, it's part of the specifications of these ports. You can't actually stop any from using them. But Nvidia will not, because Nvidia came up with its own implementation with its G-Sync chip and it will take it to the grave. Now we all hope that won't happen, that you know we can use our Nvidia cards with monitors that don't cost as much as a new liver. Again, I'm being hyperbolic, I do this quite often, but it still won't happen because Nvidia would rather you use their technology from top to bottom, technology upon which they have complete control over, even though it means you will be paying a premium for a new monitor with G-Sync, and let's face it, you will not have as much variety in your choices as you would have with FreeSync because it's just much, much, much cheaper to implement, so companies are doing it. They're everywhere nowadays. 75 Hz is the new 60 Hz, but there is also the issue of high-end monitors. Namely, you know the Vega 64 doesn't really kill a 1080 Ti, right? Well, if you're gonna have a 2K widescreen display running at 144 Hz, there's a chance that a uh, Vega 64 won't be able to get there. Sure, you'll still have a massive free sync interval from probably like 40 to 144 Hz that you can just run games smooth as butter in, but when you crank up the details or if you go to a 4K monitor that has that 144 Hz refresh rate, I'm not sure if there are many of them on the market currently, your card won't be able to do it. Sure, at that frequency neither can a 1080 Ti, but going back to the 2K example, Nvidia's hardware is powerful enough to actually use that range to the fullest. Sure, there is even 200Hz monitors, but those are TNs, and TNs can go die in a fire. Again, being hyperbolical, I do this quite often, I just hate TN monitors. They are a dead technology that must be wiped out, but that's a story for another time. And coming back to the 4K thing, Nvidia is actually trying to push a new kind of display, the BFGD big 
format gaming monitor that's about 40 something inches 4K. It's basically a television, a 4K TV, but with the electronics of a monitor, meaning you don't have the latency associated with the television, and you do have the G-Sync module in it. That thing will cost you truly a kidney, probably two. So at that point, the price of the module will not matter, and you'll be able to see glorious images without tearing, without stuttering, without the hitches normally associated with not running a game at the same refresh rate as the monitor, because you'll always be there thanks to Adaptive Sync and its many, many, many forms. So close, this is another chapter of the Gaming Codex. Come back next time when we will talk about a brand new sub. Well, technically it's gonna be pretty much the same subject as today, but made just in software. Goodbye.